you never know what you're getting into. That's, that's why I laugh when people say, I'm going to get married when I'm ready. I'm going to have kids when I'm ready. You know what? You're never ready. Right. You, get, you get as close as you can, and then you buy a lot of scotch, and you drink it all, and then you're ready. <laughs> All right. Hello, January 4th. Wow. 2017. Welcome back to the Smart Couple Podcast and welcome if you're new. If you're just joining us for this year, your life is going to change if you continue to listen to this podcast, in particular, your relationship to yourself and future partner or current partner, and probably even your friendships and family relationships. I'm Jason Gaddis. I'm your host. And here at the Smart Couple Podcast, we are all about having beautiful, deep relationships, particularly with one person. When it comes to long-term relationship like marriage, there's a lot of roadblocks and challenges. And so my job is to help you with those. We come you know, head-to-head here with our own bullshit in relationship. And that's usually what stops us from getting the kind of love that we want in our hearts. So because you're listening here, the assumption is you're into growth and development. You're into looking at yourself in the mirror. There are not quick fixes on this podcast where you get to uh, point the finger at someone and feel better. (laughs) Obviously, I'm into staring myself in the face all day long in my marriage And when my marriage isn't going well and it's challenged, which is often because that's just the nature of long-term relationship, I have challenges. My first question is, what's my part? What is my part? What in the hell did I do or not do that caused this disconnection? And then I go get to work on it. And I use my tools and maps and the help I have, and I change it and transform it so that I can feel connected again. Because honestly, I do not like feeling disconnected from my partner. It's just not as pleasant. Life takes on more of a dreary vibe. So I work hard to stay connected to my partner. And so challenges come up, boom, we get disconnected, and then boom, we work on it and we're back on point, okay? All right, in this episode, I have a really cool man who helps a lot of people with their relationships, Charles Orlando. And this guy is quite the force on social media, if you know anything about him. And if you haven't, I think you're going to like what his approach is, what he has to say. And if you just go check him out on social media, you'll see that there's a plethora of information. All right. Charles J. Orlando is a relationship expert and best-selling author of The Problem with Women is Men, his first book, and a book series called The Pact, Goodbye Past, Hello Love, and then the upcoming graphic novella, Don't Date a Dick. And he serves as expert host on the hit show Seven Year Switch on FYI, currently in its second season. So that should be starting, the second season should be starting apparently any day now. Okay, he's referred to as the Malcolm Gladwell of relationships by the media, and Carrie Bradshaw meets Hitch by his readers. Charles has built a 1.5 million personal fan base on Facebook, completely by word of mouth. And he, I've been following this guy, I followed him on Twitter years ago, we became friends on Twitter, and then I met him at a men's conference in Atlanta when I was speaking on The Disconnected Mail, and Charles was speaking uh, about men, And he was also speaking about social media and how to get your brand out there. And uh, so I've met this guy in person, uh, just a good dude. And he's uh, married, he's got kids. And in this episode, he actually talks about his own challenges in his marriage. He's pretty private when it comes to his family life. And he reveals a little bit here. uh, Because, you know, I want want to hear from honest people that are like, yeah, man, uh, marriage is hard. And so he shares that here. 
and it's pretty cool of him to do that uh, because I felt like it would serve and apparently he did too. You're also going to hear about why people get divorced in January and what to do about it and a couple of pieces of advice there on how to avoid divorce and rock out your marriage. And he also has sort of a piece of advice that I really liked um, that you can do every single day. And uh, certainly one I do in my own marriage. So we jump around a bit. Uh, we talk about men and women, some of the differences. We talk about his books. Uh, we talk about um, why people struggle so hard in relationship. And I just think there's a few really good gems in here that you're going to want to listen to. Okay. Quick announcement. I am doing a free live webinar for coaches and therapists on January 11th, 2017. Go to jasongaddis.com slash coaches to register. And you, if you are a therapist or a coach, I'm going to challenge you to get better results this year in your clients with relationship problems and challenges. And I'm going to share a couple secrets there that have changed the game for me and talk about why I left my psychotherapy practice a few years ago uh, out of frustration and started to do something different and see way better results with my clients. Okay, you're also going to be interested in this webinar if you are a person who's done a lot of personal growth and development and has taken a lot of workshops or classes and gets it on some level in that area because otherwise it might be a little over your head. So uh, it's for a little more advanced people and therapists and coaches when it comes to relationship problems. If you like helping other people with their relationship problems, you're going to want to be there. January 11th, jasongaddis.com slash coaches. And that's at 12 p.m. Mountain Time. All right. And as usual, listen to the very end for your action step. Here we go. All right. Welcome to the show, Charles Orlando. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Good to uh, be with you again. It's been quite a while since I've talked to you, and I'm pumped for this conversation. It's been a wild journey since the last time you and I connected, and, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just hanging on. <laughs> whatever, yeah. whatever moves the masses, that's what I'm doing. That's it. Awesome. Yeah, tell us uh, just briefly what is alive for you, what's up for you, and then we'll get into kind of how you got into this work. Uh, sure. It's been a it's been a crazy year. My my third book, The Pact, came out a year and a half ago uh, to rave reviews, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, it's helped a lot of people. And coming up in January uh, is my fourth book, which is titled Don't Date a Dick, <laughs> which is a, a departure. <laughs> it's a departure from my normal kind of self help writing. Uh, it's a 40 page graphic novel. Uh, that really highlights a lot of the key issues that a lot of women face when trying to find the right guy. Uh, and that's been written up in a variety of places. That's the first in the three book series. Um, and I got a television show that debuts in January on FYI. Uh, I'm the new expert host on seven years switch where I get to help uh, four couples uh, with my co-host uh, together with my co-host. We, we help four couples who are at an impasse and or disconnected in their marriages find a new way to relate to each other and mostly to themselves. Wow, dude, uh, that's awesome. Congratulations on all of that. Thank you. It sounds surreal to say. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. So I'm whatever. <laughs> well, my guess is you've busted your ass, you know, to help that many people. Well, I, I, that's, that's been my, my goal is as trite as it may sound. I just want to reach as many people as possible and, and give them the tools that they need to never talk to me again, basically. And yeah. if you're happy in a relationship, you don't need me anymore. So good. We can be friends differently. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Cool, man. Um, so how did you get from where you are today, with which is help, helping a lot, a lot of people, a million and a half or so people on Facebook and you know all your books and fans, how did you get from there to... Uh, like rewind the tape here. Like when did you get into helping people with their relationships and how did that come about? Well, it started with, with me trying to help myself. Right. And in my humblest opinion, I've always been a good guy, but 
you back me up 25, 30 years ago, and, and I was a good guy with ulterior motives, right? I, I say that I had a, a morally challenged youth. Um, and so you meet the right lady, and you have the core skills it takes to be a good guy, <clears throat> but you don't necessarily have what it takes to, to be a good guy in a long-term relationship. You don't know how it, how it all works. Uh, and for many men, that's a, that's a primal challenge. You know, we're here to, when you boil us down to our DNA, we are, we're here to perpetuate our species and sire children that continues a strong bloodline, right? That's, that's it. Yeah. So if this is a civilization and we're going to do something differently, then I had to grow as a human and as a man. So I did a lot of work on myself, a lot of reading, a lot of introspection. And on that journey, I, I ran into a lot of uh, women who had run into the man that I was and other women who were trying to meet the man that I was aspiring to be. And we talked a lot about both sides of that. And then I met a lot of men who were on, on all ends, of, both ends of the spectrum. Those who were just trying to meet women and get laid. And those guys who were on their own kind of journey of self-improvement, looking to uh, be the, the best piece of themselves, the, the best, some of their parts as it were. And you talk to a couple people that turns into a few hundred, turns into a few thousand, turns into my first book. Um, and before I knew it, I had left my capitalistic uh, career behind and turned into full-time writer and author. Uh, and if I, I guess if I needed a, uh, a real title, I'm a professional inspirationalist. <laughs> nice. I try to get people to think about themselves in a, in a different way. Yeah, cool. And you're married with kids or what's your relationship status? I'm married with kids. Uh, my kids are older. Uh, they're 18 and 21. Uh, so, and it's been 26 years of my wife and she hasn't killed me yet. So, you know, <laughs> let's, let's get something straight, right? Like, you know, you're talking to the expert here and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of it, you spend five minutes with my family and they'll probably tell you what an asshole I am, right? right. I'm just a normal guy. And yeah. uh, so any expert who's saying anything differently is either lying or selling something or both. Yeah, that's so true, man. They keep you humble, right? <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. So, okay, let me ask you one more question about the kind of personal journey there. Rewind us back to the moment when you uh, went from maybe just sort of a normal guy to like working on yourself. Was there a certain amount of pain that you hit? Was there an event that happened? How did you get into looking in the mirror? Like what happened? I, I just wanted to be better than I was. Uh, and, and it sounds very simple, right? But you know, when you, when you, when you look at yourself and you, and you're not pleased with who you are and you feel like you're missing pieces of your life and you feel like you're missing the boat. Um, I want to grow and be the best person that I can on my, on my right forearm. I have a tattoo that kind of, uh, exemplifies this, uh, and it's written in Latin and it says, summum bonum non est bonum satis. So summum bonum is a, is a phrase that means the highest good. If you've ever had a good day or a good experience uh, or anything um, that, that's remotely joyful, it's within what Aristotle and the times of Plato, etc. cetera, they, they called summum bonum. Uh, and so what that entire phrase means, summum bonum non est bonum satis, it means the highest good is not good enough. Mm. And that speaks to my personal quest to better myself on a, on a daily basis, uh, where I go to bed, hopefully smart, every smarter every night, but then I wake up in the morning, uh, pretending that I'm very stupid so that I can learn as much as I can from the world, from people, uh, et cetera. I mean, I'm just trying to be the best that I can be. And quite frankly, that's what we're all really here for. Yeah. And some of us get a little lost and jammed up along the way, but I, I love that. Were you, how old were you when you uh, decided to work on yourself in such a way? Uh, in my mid twenties, late twenties, 25, 28. Um, so it may be a little younger, but I'm a, I'm a little bit, I think I'm cut from a slightly different cloth. I had moved out at 15 and a half, um, completely self-made. So wow. it's a, it's been a different journey on my side of the world, I think. Um, so maybe my, my wake up call and, and, and introspection at 25, 28 is what a lot of men face in their thirties. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we're, I'm guessing, were you, uh, did you, when you got married, did you kind of know what you were getting into, or were you just, holy shit, this is, uh, once you started past the honeymoon phase, did it get really hard, and then you were like, wow, I got a, I got a deal here? Oh, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a train wreck, right? Like, you know, you get, <laughs> you, you connect up with your high school sweetheart, 
and and you think it's going to be one way and it of course it never is but then you know i mean when we met i was i was 18 20 um and it, you know where do you go from there like you have no i mean i had a lot more life experience than she did um just cuz i had already been through uh so i was 20 so 3 years in in the navy um and already been on my own for 5 5 and a half years so it it was a different it was a different kind of existence for me. But even so, you never know what you're getting into. That's that's why I laugh when people say I'm going to get married when I'm ready. I'm going to have kids when I'm ready. You know what? You're never ready. Right. You get you get as close as you can, and then you buy a lot of scotch and you drink it all, and then you're ready. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so as you know, January is a is a really big month for divorce. A lot of people file for divorce in January more than any other month. Uh, you know, they come out of the holidays and people are like, uh, yeah, I'm out of here. It didn't go so well. What, why is that? What the hell's going on here? Well, there's a couple of reasons and, and it is. Um, so a lot of people with kids, without kids, they try to get through the holidays. And I put that in big quotes. They feel that there, this is the wrong time of year to do it. There's family obligations, um, there's kids that have to be taken into consideration. You don't want to, you don't want to totally implode during, during a, a time where younger to teenage kids will remember, oh, this is the month that it's Christmas, but it's also when my family broke up. So that's part of it. Um, so a lot of people rush to the courthouse to, to file mid January, but a lot of times January, February ends up a month for divorce because that's when credit card bills come in. And when people check them on their spouse, that's when they realize, wait, you didn't buy me something from this jewelry store. Where did that come from? Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of affairs and, and infidelity ends up coming out, yeah. um, where people buy their, their significant other other <laughs> yeah, totally. something for the holidays. Yeah. Why is uh, – and like in your experience, because you coach and help a lot of people with their relationship problems and challenges – and I'm guessing prevention, uh, divorce prevention at times. What, like, what's the, the, maybe if you could distill it down to one or two things that someone could do to prevent a January divorce, is there, like, what would you recommend? You know, it's, I mean, it comes down to something so simple and, and that is to be honest, you know, and, and it's so hard because you don't want to look at somebody you've been with for a long time and say, I'm sorry that we're disconnected. You know, this isn't what I want anymore. You're not what I want anymore. I've changed. You know, no one, no one wants to say those things. And here's why. I mean, people think about marriage or a good relationship as a destination, right? You're going to arrive at this place where things are fantastic and they're going to stay that way. And the unfortunate truth is that that is complete and total bullshit because everybody changes. The world does, we do as individuals and relationships shift. So unless you're re-upping every day and you're renewing that contract on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis where you're putting the same type of effort in when you were dating, you're on the road to divorce. It may not happen today, but you fast forward three years where you've got some, some slight disconnections that lead to complacency or contempt or resentment. And you end up blowing that out into something that's unrecoverable. So the only way through that is to get real and to stay vulnerable with your partner, meaning you speak your truth, you let go of the outcome of what that truth means, and you let the chips fall where they may, because there's, that's the only way that you can keep things real and connected. Yeah, great. So let's get tactical here. Get, give us one like hypothetical example uh, for a listener here that's listening, saying, okay, I got it. Be honest. Well, I'm scared shitless. So where's a place for this person to start? What can they, what's a micro step they can take? A micro step is that a, a lot of people end up talking. The way conversation shuts down when you try to get honest is that you put all the onus and the blame on the other person. <clears throat> Excuse me. You, you, you tell them what's wrong with them. So if, let's pretend uh, as an example that they're not spending enough time with you and they're into their own life. You perceiving them as selfish and they're, they're not investing in the relationship anymore. All they care about is themselves, their career, their friends, whatever. Most of the time, people go up and say, you don't care about me. You don't spend any time. You don't do blah, blah. It, it's all this you statement, okay? Yeah. So instead, what you want to do is you want to flip that around and say, I feel ignored. I feel like you don't value me. I feel like you don't love me anymore. 
I feel like we're on the road to divorce. Those are all I statements that talk about what you feel and how you see things. Now, someone who cares about you is going to hear that and say, I don't want you feeling that way. Let's talk about what that means. Someone who's already checked out is going to say, I don't give a shit. And I'm sorry that you feel that way, but it's not real. And I don't want to hear that. Um, so the, the, the easiest way when you start getting honest is to talk about how you feel. And from there, uh, you'll, you'll have a really strong sense of where things are at. Yeah. Uh, so y- yeah, that's the, that's the basics of, of communication tactics. Make okay. you, not them. Yeah. Great. So take responsibility. I statements. Excellent. Hey, smart couple listeners, quick interruption here to remind you to sign up for my free web class next week, January 11th, 12 PM mountain time, 2 PM Eastern. Go to jasongaddis.com slash coaches. And who is this for? It is for therapists and coaches and people who have done a lot of personal growth work on themselves. Okay. Years ago, some of you know, I was a psychotherapist. I was making a lot of mistakes with my clients and there was one big one. You want to find out what that was. And I kept people stuck and it's, um, you know, I've grown a lot and changed a lot and I just have found better tools. So if you want better tools to help yourself or other people through their relationship problems, you don't want to miss this. Go to jasongaddis.com slash coaches. All right, back to the Charles show. Will you, will you take us to a moment maybe in your 25 year marriage where, uh, it wasn't looking good or it was really hard and what what you guys did about it. Like if you, I'm guessing you have a moment that was pretty dark or challenging. Oh my, oh my God. Do you only want one? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't like there's, to assume. I know that I kind of, I'm moment. assuming anyway, but I want to be polite and respectful here. No, I appreciate it. But yeah, I mean, you know, there's, I, <laughs> there, there's always challenges every day with, with every type of relationship. I've often said that, that love is so easy. It's cohabitation and the, the kind of how life dishes out its challenges that make everything so difficult. Love's the easy part. Um, I mean, th- I'm not going to get into specifics because I'm careful with my private life. But just to give an example, you know, sometimes you have, to, you have to say hard truths that the other person might get hurt from or might, might not want to hear. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's ugly for both people to where you have to get real and raw and you don't want to be a jerk. Right. But at the same time, you have to say it pretty straight and then talk about the implications and what that means. Um, so if you're, I mean, I, underneath your question is kind of like, have you and your wife ever considered divorce? Yeah. Yeah, we have 25, 26 years is a long time. Yeah. Um, and anybody who says differently, uh, is either living with their with their head buried in the sand or got lucky, and and that's it, it happens, right? Yeah. Um, but no, we we've definitely contemplated all kinds of things. Sometimes you you have life intervene, and when you end up with a couple of kids in the mix, it completely shifts dynamics. You end up with careers on the rise, and it changes things again. Um, and you know, we have we fallen? Have I not taken my own advice? And have we fallen out of communication? Sure. Uh, we can take an article that I wrote six years ago about why women cheat, uh, where I went undercover on a cheater's website, um, where I, I was trying to get the real world reasons as an investigative reporter. Uh, this was actually an article that was optioned for television and film. It's in development at the moment, but, um, Hmm. so, but she knew I was doing it. Uh, but what we didn't count on is how I would feel when it happened. So you take a guy who's been in a 20 year marriage where things are running kind of on automatic pilot and you put him in a place where women find him desirable. They're flirty. And did I cheat? No. Did I want to? Yeah. Yeah. I was tempted. Yeah. And I had to bring that information back home with me and get real with her. Hmm. And that was, that was tough. I, I wrote all about it. Um, a very, very honest exploration of, not only what happened when I went out on these three dates with, with women, but what happened when I came home. Wow. Uh, and, and it was hard. Uh, it was hard for her too. She wanted to, I, I put her in a, in a shitty situation, you know? I mean, if she said, yes, you can do this article, Charles, what she was saying was, sure, I'd love to put our marriage on the line. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, if she said no, what she's, 
quietly saying is, I'm sorry, I don't support your career. And that means I build contempt and resentment. So it was a no win. And I didn't realize I was putting her in that shitty situation Uh when I did it. Yeah. So, you know, so how did we get through it? Well, (laughs) it took a long time. Um, it, It took a long time because when you get real like that, it's real for everybody. Yeah. So, and, and, uh, I'm guessing there was some strengthening, uh, things that happened, uh, as you got through it. Uh, eventually, yes. Uh, what it started with was some massive disconnection and some knockdown drag out fights, non-physical, of course. And that's, I'm speaking facetiously, but yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't pretty in my house. Um, it just wasn't. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this stuff is real, even for us, quote, experts, right, is that relationship is challenging. And what I love about what you're saying, though, is, you know, uncomfortable situation, and you're doing what you're telling us to do here, the listener, which is to, number one, be honest, right? Bring it to the table, make I statements. And it's gonna, it might turn into a fight. It might turn into a lot of conflict and a lot of charge. And if you stay with it, you know, uh, I'm guessing good things can happen, you know? And some, for some people, sure. they don't make it. It sounds like you made it. Well, yeah, and, and good things happening are uh, – it, it, that's a subjective term. You know, if, you, if you've reached – sometimes relationships reach the end of their journey. That doesn't mean that you're a piece of garbage or that they are. It just mean that thing, it means that things ran their course. And I'm not an advocate for separation or divorce. I'm just an advocate for equality in relationships and happiness for everyone, period. So if, if things aren't working moving forward – you're better to just be straight instead of muddling through the next 50 years with someone that you aren't connected to. Totally. You just got to get real. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Powerful stuff here. When we, let me shift to, (laughs) (laughs) thanks for sharing that, man. I'm just sure that's more than you counted on. (laughs) No, I mean, I have a hundred other questions. I'm like, Ooh, dude, we could get really into this. I want to ask, and I want to just honor the, the privacy piece. Um, and I also want to keep delivering value here to the, to the uh, listener. Uh, not that this wouldn't be valuable, but I just love, um, I love the transparency and the truth and, you know, the example of like, hey, um, fighting is inevitable and conflict's hard. And uh, can we just be honest and be ourselves through the process? It's so humbling and, and helpful. All right. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, when when we get into sort of the male female dynamics, um, we could make sure we could make a lot of generalizations, which some of which would be just straight up true. Uh, your first book was called "The Problem with Women Is Men." With, is men right? Right. Um, and I'm guessing that pissed some men off. Um, and will you say more about what you see out there versus like men versus women in relationship? Well, things have, have changed. So let, let's take that title with, with slight grains of salt. Um, it, it's a, it's a, in my opinion, it's a great marketing, marketing hook and, and title. Relationships are 50-50, uh, and they are. Um, even if your 50% is that you're staying too long with the wrong person or you're putting up with bad behavior, you still have accountability, and it's 50% yours. Um, so in, in those books, you will find, because uh, it's a two-book series, in, in those books, you will find that, sure, some, some men, and I put big capital bolded asterisks around that word, some men may act wrong. But who really has the accountability for that? Is it, your, is it the women who select them, either consciously or subconsciously? Uh, is it that they stay too long with a guy who's showing them that he doesn't value her? Um, I mean, everybody's got pieces. That doesn't excuse the wrong guy's bad behavior, but what it does do is put the control back on the person who's staying exactly with the wrong person. Um, so are there great men out there? Absolutely. But if you settle for the wrong guy, by default, you are not selecting the right one. So to those women who are saying, oh my God, I just, all these men are so bad. I, I've been in five bad relationships. There's no good men out there. No, you, you really haven't. You haven't been in five bad relationships. You've selected the same guy, same type of guy, five times in a row. And that's your selection process. That's not the men. Right. <laughs> that's confronting, right, for them to hear? <laughs> <laughs> well, and nobody wants to hear that, right? It's much easier to say, no, all men are shit, right? 
and it's much easier. All women are gold diggers. No, just the ones you pick. There's good <laughs> people out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm with you. Yeah, that's a good one because it's uh, it's challenges for any listeners here. If that's you, you know, be like, look, it's back to take responsibility, look in the mirror. If you you keep repeating the same relationship patterns, you're the one repeating the pattern, right? Absolutely. Well, and this is part of what my third book, The Pact, is all about. A lot of people write into me about, and they have for years, writing into me about the same issues about about uh, control issues in their relationship, their self-esteem problems, hooking up with a narcissist, uh, issues from their family of origin or their past, repeating bad patterns, um, the notion of unconditional love. Like there's all these things that they keep writing into me about. And these are things that stop us from getting the life and the love that they want. And, and that's what the pact is all about, examining these issues, taking control of them, and then what you can do to shift all these patterns around. Awesome. What does the pact mean? Can you explain it a little bit? Well, you make like a promise why that to title? yourself to change things. Well, it's, it, the full title is The Pact, Goodbye Past, Hello Love. And it really goes into um, shifting all of these bad patterns by making a promise to yourself to, to reverse it. Um, so as you start going into uh, your past, you end up making a pact with you and walking through uh, the exercises that are there to change things. Uh, and, and make things better for yourself. Because ultimately, look, like I'm an expert, you're an expert. There's a lot of people who, who have expertise when it comes to relationships and interpersonal relations and relationship dynamics. But no matter what anybody does, no matter what tools or methodologies you're given, the ultimate work is really on your side. You know, there's no magic pill. So if you're not going to do the work, save your 1495, do not buy my book and just sit and be miserable. Or take control and do something and you take tools and you use them, but there's no magic pill. So that's what the pact is all about is, is taking, uh, and there's 10 different packs that you take within the book, within the book itself. But there's, it's really taking control of, of your life, your situation and doing something better because you choose it and you work into it. You work through it. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. That's going to resonate. I think for the listener here, cause we're, we're people who are into growth and development and taking a stand for what we want. And you're essentially saying, make agreements with yourself, a pact that you're going to do something about it and you're going to go after and get what you want, right? By facing yourself. Yeah. yeah Absolutely. Awesome. And hold yourself accountable. Yeah. How, how do you, uh, what's, I'm glad you mentioned that. What do you recommend when people are living in a silo and, um, it's hard for them to hold themselves accountable. Like, you know, it's New Year's. Everybody's like, hey, the gym, I'm going to the gym now, but they'll last, you know, a month or two months. Um, can you say something about accountability in relationship and maybe peers or therapists or coaches? Like, how does one hold themselves accountable to pack, making packs or agreements with ourselves? Well, so people know when they don't do what they're supposed to be doing. They make a conscious decision. They may deny it. They may shift it around. They may push it away. But you know that when you sign up, this is how gyms stay alive, especially this time of year. You know, so you, you make this, this huge resolution to go to the gym five times a week and you're going to go. Uh, and you start to, you start to do that and then you stop going, but you don't want to feel like a failure. So you just keep paying the monthly premium. I'm going to eventually do it. Yeah. Someday, someday I'll, I'll make it happen. Look, someday is just a code word for never. So someday you're going to go to Tahiti. Someday you're going to go to the gym. I call bullshit on all your Sundays. It starts today. And when it comes to accountability, that's the type of wake-up call that's necessary. Uh, sometimes it takes somebody like me. Uh, sometimes it takes somebody else that you trust, whether it's a family member, a, uh, a, a, a priest, a fireman. Like Just pick somebody that you trust where you're able to – uh, listen to what they have to say and then reflect on what that actually means for you and what you're supposed to be doing. Um, that's, that's the wake up call that's needed. And then from there, it really is about willpower and, and a conscious effort every day to chase down what you say that you want. Cause ultimately yeah. you're in charge of whatever you get. Yeah, that's right. Nice. Okay. As we start to wind down, um, what, like, could you describe, so a person might have a realistic notion of what an awesome marriage or long-term relationship looks like? Like, what, 
what is what does that feel like? What does it look like? Um, what are some of the signs of how we know when we're in a really good marriage? Because a lot of people will think it just feels good all the time. And I'm pretty sure based on what you've told us here today that it's not that. No, it's not. It's so marriages are defined by a variety of things. First of all, I, I'll reiterate what I had originally said, and that is it is a constant re-up and, and, and there's constant effort put in. And that's different than work, right? People go to work so that they can earn a check to do what they actually love to do. Sometimes people love their work, but most often they, they're, making, they're making money so that they can take trips or go to the beach or do their hobbies or, or whatever. Um, effort is what you put into things that you're super passionate about. And that's why I say that relationships definitely take effort. Uh, and they take effort because they matter to you. You want to do those things. Uh, a, a real relationship, a really healthy relationship, uh, a lot of people say, you know, a real relationship takes uh, loyalty and honesty and trust and commitment uh, and passion. And that's, that's not necessarily all of it. A real love and a real relationship includes all of those things, but ultimately – a great relationship or a great marriage is really is about how you feel not only about them, but how you feel about you when you're with them. Uh, because mm -hmm. if you feel good about you, the rest of all the things I just mentioned come very naturally. You would never betray them because you can see how that's just betraying yourself. You, you would never be dishonest with them because you're just lying to you. Uh, you would never show them how they're not valuable because that reflects on your own value. And, and that's really the ultimate test uh, of, a, of a healthy marriage where you would never think of disrespecting them because ultimately you would just be disrespecting yourself. Yeah. Um, and that said, it just takes constant effort, you know? Yeah, yeah, agreed. And how important is it to get outside help? Um, therapy, coaching, books, uh, classes, how, how much do you stress that with the people you work with and you see? It depends on where they're at in their own in their own kind of kind of cycle. Um, if you're in a bad pattern, it can be extremely difficult to see anything because you have no perspective um, because you're in it, and those bad patterns end up end up downward spirals where things get worse and worse uh, because you you can't sort out what what the symptoms are versus the cause. So the resentment comes out every time they speak, but what started that? So you can't back up far enough to, to get any perspective on it. Coaching and counseling can definitely assist the process um, for sure, but uh, that's only if you actually put something into it and you get really honest with the counselor that you're working with. Uh, and, and too often we end up doing once a week, and I have a hard time with that. So the, the couples that I see – usually end up being two or three times a week for an hour a session, at least sometimes 90 minutes, because otherwise you have this intermittent reinforcement. So you're going to see the counselor for 60 minutes, and then you're going to spend the next <laughs> six days and 23 hours away from the counselor to reinforce hopefully good things. But more often than not, it takes more, more work and more effort. So I end up working with couples uh, more often at the beginning and as they start to reinvent their communication, then I can drop back to, to something that's, that's more palatable, um, where it's once a week to reinforce and to, and to shift things. But, uh, I mean, this is what the, the show that I've, I'm on, on, on FYI is all about. Um, these are couples that are disconnected and because they're in it, they can't see it and they can't change it. So my co-host and I uh, have a methodology called switch therapy um, that gets them out of their destructive patterns and removes them completely from their relationship so that they can see it, learn new skills with new tools, and then bring them back to their marriage. It, it's, it's a drastic, accelerated process. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's two weeks away, and it's, it's, it's pretty wild. When you say switch therapy, because um, I'm just being the listener here, and I'm like, ooh, what's that? Well, so one, one of the things that, that because these people have these negative patterns and bad behaviors, they don't have perspective. So we not only remove them from their current marriage, but we partner them up with someone who's going through something similar. Um, and from there, so the, the goal, this is where people say, oh, my God, it's reality TV. You're trying to get them to cheat. No, we're not. 
What we're trying to do is to get them to negotiate, to communicate, to get back to basics with someone who is like-minded and going through something similar, get those skills that they started their marriages with back to the top of the back, kind of rise up to the top of, of things and then bring that back to their relationship. Uh, now, could these people choose to do something stupid and, and cheat? Sure, they, they could, but they're going to do that anyway. I mean, we all have opportunity. So mm-hmm. if they're doing that, that has nothing to do with the show. That has to do with the choices people make. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but there's something. Yeah, it's, it's a very intense, accelerated process. Yeah, I was going to say there's something powerful about kind of, like you're saying, remove yourself from the situation, get some perspective. Just that alone uh, can be hugely, hugely helpful. Absolutely. Cool. Um, great, Charles. Well, I'm, uh, man, I'm just really psyched on where you're at and what you're up to helping the people. Where can people find more about you and the show and your books? Uh, you can pretty much find me across the internet using the, uh, using the handle Charles J Orlando. Uh, so you can go to Charles J Orlando.com or find me anywhere on, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, Snapchat, um, <laughs> Pinterest, Instagram, Charles J Orlando, uh, and you'll, you'll find me. Okay, cool. Yeah. And he's been on, uh, I've been following him on Facebook for years and Twitter, I think is where we first met. I, I think, um, I think so. Yeah. Regardless, uh, he's Charles is super active on social media. So you want to, you want to check out his stuff there and very, you're very entertaining and funny and confronting. And it's another thing I really like about you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been a, <laughs> it's been a wild, wild journey. And I, I just feel grateful that I get to reach and help as many people as I can. Yeah, man. Awesome. Well, it's inspiring. Uh, just, you know, when I think about writing my own books, I'm working on a couple, you know, you're definitely one of the people I'm like, that inspires me to get that done. Uh, cause I just keep seeing you put it out there and make it happen. Nice. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I love your stuff. So let's, let's stay connected for sure. Yeah, you got it, man. All right, Charles, thanks a lot for being with us and thanks for offering up your knowledge and wisdom. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You got it. Thank you. Nice. Okay. Lots, lots in there with Charles. Definitely go check this guy out. All right. Uh, I just watched the trailer to this seven year switch show on FYI. I don't even know what FYI was Um, for those TV goers. This could be a really interesting show. Uh, looks to me like a reality show. Looks super intense. Imagine swapping wives and husbands and living with them as a way to try to get at your relationship problems. It certainly would shake things up. There's no question. So this show looks <laughs> really interesting. Uh, so check Charles out on that show. He's going to be one of the coaches there, kind of helping people out. And definitely check out his books and his website charlesjorlando.com or at charlesjorlando. He's all over the place on social media. All right, some good highlights from this one. Re-upping your game every day in your marriage. I really, really like that. How many of you are re-upping your game every day? You know, maybe it's every week, maybe every month. And wouldn't it be inspiring to be in a relationship where you re-upped every day? Really, I really liked what Charles said there. So that's going to have something to do with your action step here in a moment, so stay tuned for that. He said 50%, right? Each party of a couple takes 50%. That's one way to look at it, and, and I'm okay with that. And I really like what Gay and ha- Katie Hendricks said years ago in a book I read, which is both parties take 100%, which equals 200%. And there's something about the 200% that I like, which I teach, um, borrowing that from Gay and Katie. It just makes more sense to me. I take 100% responsibility for my part, not 50% responsibility. So feel free to do what you want with that one, but I want to encourage you to go to 100% of responsibility. And the person you're with takes 100% and it equals 200%, right? Cool. Now, In episode 84, I challenged you to write a list of the relationships you're good with and the relationships that you have some challenges in. 
where you're not complete and to pick the most challenging relationship and to do something about it this year in 2017, right? So let's build off that and build off Charles's concept of the pact, making a pact with yourself, all right? And make a pact. I want to encourage you to make a pact with yourself that you are going to do something, take a serious action step toward getting the relationship you want. So if you're single, that might mean finding the person or practicing and gearing yourself up and getting ready for that person whenever they come along. And that could look like working on your shit, facing your stuff, looking in the mirror, right? Uh, if you're in a relationship, it could mean, and it's not so good, it means you're going to do something about it. You're going to um, advocate for change or you're going to leave, right? Um, and if you're in a solid relationship and you want to go deeper, you make a pact around that. Hey, let's have... Um, an even deeper connection. Let's do something wild together and let's do a couples retreat, a tantric workshop, like whatever. Okay, so make a pact on what you're going to do. Make a pact on what you're going to do. And first make it with yourself. I always like to make a pact with myself and then I get accountability by calling myself out with a friend. Now, if you're single, um, you want to do this with yourself. And then I would choose a close, close friend and say, Hey, here's what I'm going to do about my relationships in 2017. Now I want to have you take one more action step, a little riskier for some of you, which is to look your partner in the eye or look a very, very close friend in the eye and say, um, I want to re up our relationship. What does that mean? Well, you define it, but uh, my suggestion is you sort of take notes of what Charles said. And one of the things I ask in my own marriage is, what am I offering to my partner today? I've talked about that in the podcast before. What am I offering? What am I bringing to the table here? That's another way to think about it. And re-upping is saying that, like, I, honey, I want to re-up. I want to bring more to the table. I can do better. I want to improve. Not a challenge to your partner to re-up and they need to improve. No. Nope. Remember, we're going to take responsibility here. We're not going to point the finger at someone else. You're going to say, I want to renew, re-up, uh, reinvigorate. I'm going to take a stand for improving this relationship on my side of things. Okay? All right, there you go. There's your action step for this week. You may have noticed there are two podcasts coming out now a week. And the Monday night episode that comes out around Monday night 5 to 6 p.m. Mountain Time-ish, is a shorter episode with one question where I address one question from you, the listener. And I'll be doing that all year long in 2017. And I've already got a great backlog of excellent questions. When you leave us questions or you email us in, please leave where you're from. I always like to say, hey, you know, so-and-so from Australia, Canada, the UK. All right, that just helps us kind of connect around the world here. I think it's fun, all right? So try to let us know where you're at. Use the voice question if you can. Well, we have a couple of those coming up. And that's right on the website on jasongaddis.com. Ask Jason. You can just record a voicemail to me. And then we play that on the podcast. So that's also a nice way to get your voice in here, all right? And I am just committed all the way here to serving you with good, good relationship nuggets and wisdom that are going to genuinely help you in your life, all right? And I've got some really, really exciting stuff coming up in 2017. The Relationship School's entering our second year. We are, uh, I mean, changing lives left and right. It's very inspiring, and uh, people are really magnetized to something going on over here. So I encourage you to check us out. A couple different ways you can do that. JasonGaddis.com slash The Relationship School. Or you can go to jasongaddis.com slash smart couple group if you want to join our smart couple community. And some of those folks eventually make the transition into our relationship school community where we have a paid membership private community. Okay, it's like a VIP little inner circle crew of people very committed to improving their relationships and deepening them. All right. 
And of course, we face ourselves because that is one of the huge keys to having powerful intimacy is having powerful intimacy with the person in the mirror, all right? And finally, I'm so curious how that little commercial break was for you. That's a new addition here in The Smart Couple is I am going to be sprinkling in a few of my own promotions, uh, things I believe in, things that I want you to know about. Uh, you'll find that somewhere in the middle to beginning or end of the podcast episodes. So just giving you a heads up, they may have caught you off guard. There may have been some impact there. I get it. And uh, it just feels right because I, I really want you to have even better tools and more access to awesome stuff that I'm putting out. So in that vein, just a reminder, that live webinar, again, jasongaddis.com slash coaches, January 11th, 12 p.m. Mountain Time. It's really for folks who are coaches, therapists, or have done a lot of work on themselves to get better tools and to sharpen your relational sword with other people. Be there. Okay, beautiful people. We will see you on the other side. Have a beautiful rest of your day, morning, evening. 